Hello, my name is Maria, but I go by Masha. Because of things like this and a toddler running around, it's nearly impossible to do a single take, so you will not see my face for much of this presentation. I'm happy to present Color Triads by me, Amlan Carr, Sanya Fiddler, and Karen Saint. The key insight in our work is the observation that many naturally occurring color distributions, such as this grass image here, can be modeled by a nonlinear triangle in RGB space. Our color triad formulation allows approximating existing distribution with a simple, structured, and interactive representation ability to approximate existing images and image regions in this way is a powerful tool for a number of applications. We demonstrate its use for color editing, uh, use color triad module inside a deep learning architecture and sketch out a number of other applications in our supplemental material. Previous work has considered using a few solid colors to drive imagery coloring. A related area splits existing images into several solid color mats, which can then be used for editing. Our approach is complementary to these methods and unlike them allows users visualization and direct control of the underlying color distribution. In my previous work on Playful Palette, um, I designed an interface that allows artists to directly construct color distributions by playing with colored blobs. Just a few blobs were sufficient to create complex color manifolds sufficient to paint advanced shaded objects. However, the freeform nature of this representation made it difficult to apply to existing artwork. It also ignores the common use case of discrete gradients and uh, focuses on the continuous case. In this work, we set out to find the minimal interactive primitive for modeling color distributions in existing images. Let's begin by considering the common case of a shaded object. Of course, the solid circle is just the point in RGB space, and a Lambertian sphere is well modeled by a linear gradient. However, sp specularity int can introduce color distributions that span the range between the darkest dark, the diffuse color, and the specularity. More complex synthetic lighting effects produce a similar result. We use this observation as the basis for our representation. While it's not surprising that synthetic lighting can cause um, distributions that are linear in RGB space, uh, we note that the behavior of light in the real world is not necessarily linear. A common example of this is the blending of paints. Uh, so imagery such as a painted sphere may result in more complex nonlinear effects. We set out to approximate both linear and nonlinear distributions, such as those found in these two shaded objects. We propose a method to fit a color triad um, to the distribution, resulting in the approximation on the right. Note that all the colors in the sphere on the right come directly from the color triad approximation, shown as the triangle. Because color triads are nonlinear, they are also able to produce good approximations of nonlinear effects, such as the example on the bottom, which results in this approximation, which is nearly indistinguishable from the original. Let's jump into the formulation. Rather than defining color triad as a standard RGB interpolation, we formalize the notion of sampling frequency and define a subdivision level which splits each edge of the triangle into s equal numbered chunks. We then take a combinatorial approach to define the set of all colors within the color triad by considering fractional contributions of each color from s minus 1 over s minus 1 to 0 over s minus 1. In this case, each color uh, can be contained as 100%, 75%, 25%, or 0% of each color. The full set of colors in the color triad is defined as all combinations of these fractional additions such that they add up to 1. This is exactly this number of colors. 
and I note that this correctly results in pure gradients between any two pair of colors. If we include the upside down triangles within this color triad rendering, then this number is expanded exactly to S squared, and we take this as the final color triad representation. Note that we're still only considering the linear blending case. This subdivision level allows us to naturally span the range between coarse color distributions and finer ones. As previously discussed, linear interpolation in RGB offers limited modeling capacity for many natural phenomena. For example, in this case, the interpolation between three acrylic pigments deviates strongly from linear RGB interpolation. We augment color triad representation with a constrained amount of nonlinearity, which prevents the formation of degenerate self intersection distributions. We refer to our paper for details and merely demonstrate the visual effect of the nonlinearity controlling parameters. Specifically, we have a scalar parameter B that allows interactive control of the 3D shape um, of the distribution, thus allowing it to span uh, a range of blending effects. In addition, a focus parameter uh, defined by two scalar values allows shifting the focus from one of the colors to another. In summary, for the same set of three colors, um, unlike regular RGB interpolation, which just has one pre predefined solution space, color triads allow varying uh, its subdivision, blending, and focus point parameters to achieve a wide range of effect and th effects, and thus resulting in a stronger modeling capacity as well as additional creative affordances. We now use this color triad formulation to approximate existing distributions. Given an input Y, which can be an image image region or just a collection of color samples, we seek to find color triad parameters such that when plugged into the formula for the resulting color triad, colors result in a good approximation of the input. To evaluate the performance, we use a perceptual metric, which measures a fraction of input color samples or pixels that are approximated within delta by selecting the closest matching color in the triad. This delta is computed in lab space and is visualized here. However, this metric, um, due to an indicator function, is difficult to use in an optimization procedure. We therefore rely on two different costs during optimization, namely an L2 reconstruction loss between the input samples and their best reconstruction using the triad. And additionally, we use KL divergence to discourage the solution from containing many colors that are irrelevant to the input set of colors. Color triad formulation, along with these costs and an initial guess, is amenable to optimization with the black box iterative optimizer, which is used to compute the resulting color triad parameters. We additionally implement color triad optimization using a neural network. In this case, the input is not a collection of input samples, but a discretized histogram which standardizes the input to a fully connected encoder network, which outputs color triad parameters, which are then fed into the fully differentiable color triad module, which produces the color triad colors according to our formulation. These colors can then be used to estimate the training loss for the input samples. Unlike iterative optimization in this case, of course, we pre-train the network using a large collection of image patches. At runtime, the network outputs the best average case solution for the input. Our primary motivation for demonstrating this approximation method is the possibility of using color triad module inside a deep learning architecture. We demonstrate one such sample application which is a fully convolutional neural network that, given an image, produces soft alpha masks 
and corresponding color triads which can be used to interactively edit the image. We believe there are a number of other applications using deep learning and leave this area to future work. By their very nature, color triads are designed to approximate coherent image regions and not distributions of entire images. We therefore evaluate their approximation ability accordingly by looking at patches. We collect a large set of patches and use entropy as a proxy to split them into easy, medium, and hard. Both iterative optimization and trained neural network achieve great reconstruction quality on patches. Even for hard patches, nearly 90% of input pixels are approximated within a certain delta. Quality is much higher for medium and easy patches. We note that hard patches may correspond to object boundaries and actually include multiple uh, disjoint objects with different color distributions. Unsurprisingly, iterative optimization performs better because it's able to fine tune to a specific input distribution unlike the train network which just does well in the average case however if we look at some hard patches and their approximation using the neural network the results are excellent the top row is the input patch and the bottom row is the best approximation uh, of course there's a limit to what you can represent with a single triangle so reconstructions are not expected to be perfect we also applied our approximation methods to entire images and one of the surprising findings of our work is that triads can approximate entire images surprisingly well in many cases. Both methods uh, achieve about 95% reconstruction for entire images. I will now cycle between original images and their approximations at the subdivision level 16. As you can see, most images are approximated well because subdivision 16 still results in relatively coarse palette. You can see banding artifacts in the third column first row. However, most of the other effects are reconstructed faithfully. The link established between the optimized color triad and image approximation can be used to drive interactive image recoloring. By changing color triad parameters, users can recolor the original image, achieving a variety of effects. Here, we demonstrate recoloring of the sphere in our web user interface. Users can shift focus from one base color to another, modify the color of the highlight, as well as the base color of the object. A range of other effects is possible. We'll make demos available at colorsales.com. Color triads open creative possibilities that are complementary to existing recoloring approaches. For example, the palette-based recoloring method of Chang et al. pre-bakes color relationships into the computation. Color triads allow creating a wider array of variations, for example, in the red recoloring of the forest. Layer-based decomposition methods like this work by Tan et al. allow editing the decomposed image by globally shifting color within uh, solid layers, such as applying hue or value shifts as shown above. However, the color contributions of each layer are pre-baked into the decomposition. Nonlinear parameters like the focus point and blending behavior of the color triads allows a range of complementary effects. In the general case, with the exception of global shifts, recoloring is rarely an image global operation. Like other approaches, recoloring based on color triads would work best in conjunction with region selection and masking tools of modern design software. Such integration would allow recoloring of this user-selected region of the SIGGRAPH Asia logo using the corresponding triad. In summary, we proposed color triads, a simple, structured, interactive, and versatile representation for color distributions in coherent image regions. 
We showed colored triads representational power in its application for deep learning and interactive image editing. We hope that ability to represent diverse color distributions compactly and interactively can prove useful in other scenarios.